From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Our next piece of correspondence comes to us from Jen T. Jen writes in uh, with something that I thought would interest all of us, and uh, something we've talked a little bit about in the past. Here's what you said, Jen. Hi, guys. I was recently listening to an interview with David Sinclair. He was talking about the importance of gene mapping in health and wellness. He suggested doing this through companies like 23andMe. I really like the idea of mapping my genes to educate myself about what I may be predisposed to and how I can modify my lifestyle for better health. The problem is I'm skeptical about handing my DNA over to these companies and what they may be doing with the info they compile without my knowledge. I'm not sure if you ever did a show about this topic, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, this is something, this is one of the, I've started to think of them, Matt, Noel, as phantom topics. These things that, these currents that continually come up in our conversations over the years, but somehow don't end up being a full episode. Now, full disclosure as well, um, in various projects that uh, Noel, Matt, and I have all worked on, and Paul as well, uh, the issue of using genetic testing has come up uh, in, in just shows we produce or develop. Uh, this is an increasingly important question. It's like, um, you know, the concern about how Facebook uses your data times a million. Like, it's hard to understand just how much of an issue this is going to become. Our, let's start with a cliche. Cliches are cliches because they're true. Uh, the Gadiga situation, right? Like, it was never, it never became illegal not to genetically modify your child. It just made their lives terrible because of all the burdens and burdens upon and barriers against their growth that society would put upon them. Namely, I think in there it was insurance, right? Liabilities, things like that. Uh, this, we don't want to scare people, but the potential is here for this. You know, like um, we were talking off air before we rolled on, on this, like, all right, this is not a ding on these companies. They are pretty explicit. Well, they are. They do tell you that they sell this stuff in their uh, terms of service, but they use phrases, little weasel word phrases like third parties. You know what third party is? It is literally any individual, institution, organization, or government that is not you or that company specifically. So it's like anything else in the world is a third party that I don't think these companies would ever do this, but just consider like a bond supervillain could be a third party. Elon Musk could be a third party. ISIS could be a third party. Uh, a, a on the surface, well-intentioned nonprofit that gets taken over by somebody or was started by somebody surreptitiously for the goal of nefarious means <laughs> could, could be that third party. Exactly. A pharmaceutical company could definitely be a third party. Uh, this this concern is real, Jen, because companies, these companies, some of them will already sell your genetic information to drug makers, to other Silicon Valley startups. This may not have been the intent that you had when you wanted to find out whether, you know, your grandmother's stories about your Sicilian ancestors were true or something, but there's... There's an argument uh, to be made, an argument you know we hate here on this show, for the greater good. Uh, pharmaceutical companies, R&D outfits, med tech, they can, in theory, uh, create more efficacious drugs and treatments when they are armed with more information. But how does that push toward a greater good, even if it is sincere and well-intentioned, how does it affect you? Uh, does it mean that in the future, if you and uh, if you and your partner are going to have a child, 
Uh, does it mean that insurance automatically goes through the roof for that child because they have model they have your genetic info and they've modeled uh, they've modeled this out with such fidelity that they know your kid has is four times more likely than other peers in their age group to get breast cancer at the like in their forties or something like do they how how granular can they become to use the old buzzword. Uh, does that mean that that kid's existence, like their life, is a pre-existing condition? And then how does a privatized healthcare system handle that? Like that, that stuff can happen. This is not like, yes, this gene mapping is doing tremendous things. It, it is solving crimes that would have remained unsolved for, uh, for the rest of time. But with that, there comes a trade-off, you know? We were talking about this when we recording an episode of Military Entertainment Complex. I think it was you, Noel, who, had, who used the phrase devil's bargain. And in some ways, this is very much, uh, it has the potential to be a devil's bargain because like what happens, what happens when we reach that Gladwell-esque tipping point and it is unusual for you not to have your individual DNA mapped? Like when it's, when it's weird, Oh yeah, you to be the person. Yeah, we've talked we've talked about that, you know, in the past, just about like these databases and you know the upside of it, where sure there have been crimes solved because of this type of information, but there is a version where it could become kind of an all or nothing, like you, you can't really opt out anymore, or it's like being like microchipped at birth or something. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, it's that tipping point, that slippery slope, and and do the benefits outweigh the erosion of privacy? But uh, another thing we talked about on the show a lot is the illusion of privacy. Privacy, which is more and more becoming uh, very much the the order of business, you know, in, in this country, particularly, but really in the world. Yeah, well said. I mean, this is this is the thing. Uh, you can, uh, should you choose to use these companies, which many many people do, uh, should you choose to use them, uh, they'll give you a variety of options about how you want your information shared when and with whom but these options are confusing and more hardcore privacy advocates will say they are confusing by design i don't know if it's necessarily that conspiratorial or any more conspiratorial than the typical language of a legal agreement but here's the thing even if you agree and even if they hold up their end of the bargain and act in good faith what happens when a hack occurs what happens when the first genetic database hack hits and then somebody is selling this information in the black market. You're part of it. You're, you're part of it. And uh, all of there's, you. <laughs> yeah. And there's nothing you can do. And then what happens even further when it becomes unusual to not have your genes mapped? There's a question you can ask, which is, okay, I share the same genes with, say, my sibling, right? So if my sibling gets uh, one of these tests then aren't I functionally already in the system? I'm just a few years different or, you know, whatever your normal variants of things would be. But then we have to ask ourselves, what happens when you start mapping epigenetic changes? Um, epigenetics, it's, I don't think we can call it an emerging science anymore, but it's definitely on the forefront of a lot of research. So epigenetics is the modification of a way a gene is expressed or it's the study of that rather than the alteration of the code itself uh, so you can see some great longitudinal studies about how uh, the circumstances of a person's life may affect the way genes express in their children so then combine that with a surveillance state right where everything you do is logged uh, whether right, via your phone your records, uh, maybe the IMF uh, wins their pitch to uh, base something like a credit score on your internet search history. And then people can go back and say like, okay, these are two siblings, right? These are two siblings. They live these two very different lives. Uh, they had kids, right? And of course, you know, in the wishes or horses version of this kind of research, you would say like, 
there were these two identical twins who lived two very different lives. They married another pair of, or reproduced with at least, another pair of identical twins. And now we can see what happened to the kid because of the choices, uh, the, those different choices those twins made. That's a lot, but it's totally possible. And that's, that's what, like, the problem is, and we're talking about informed consent here, because the research is so new, because the science is emergent, it is impossible to know exactly what you are agreeing to on either side of that equation, whether you're one of those companies or whether you are one of those uh, customers or one of their, you know, walking data mines. But I think we didn't, some of us have gotten those tests. I never did it, but um, did you, Matt, or was it you, Noel? I did it through like it was like a sponsorship uh, years and years ago. I did a 23andMe thing and um, it was really, I think I've mentioned on the show, the, the initial results you get are super underwhelming. If you're someone like me who is like mainly Nordic, it, it, it wasn't, I remember it was just being kind of like a womp, womp, womp. But there are apparently other uh, services that can do a deeper dive into your results and get you much more granular information. So I think that's probably where the, the more fun stuff comes from. Yeah. And I've, I've done it, I guess, tangentially because my wife and my son and my sister and my dad and my aunts and in-laws oh. and yeah, my, my entire family is basically gone with one, one or the other of the major ones. I've just walked in to the 23 and me headquarters and talked with people there, but I've never actually let them take my spit. You walked in and taught, where's their headquarters? It's uh, out there in San Francisco or near San Francisco. Oh, neat. Oh, that was research though. Wasn't it? Was that show research? Yeah. That was a interview for the Zodiac show. Um, That's right. It, back then that was like 2018. I think they had partnerships 23 and me had partnerships with Glaxo, Smith Klein, and maybe a few others, uh, but like drug companies specifically, yeah. that's what they were partnering with to share information. And at that time it was definitely, if you're a user, a consumer, uh, you, you had to state whether or not you could, that you would allow them to use your information and in research. Right. And then, you know, this can't like, this is not automatically some sinister plot because that information is immensely valuable, uh, especially in researching chronic or currently uh, incurable conditions, right? Like if you, if you had the choice and if it, it was phrased this way, the phrasing is so important. If you had the choice to make sure that future children would be able to not have lupus wouldn't you wouldn't you like to think of yourself as the kind of person who is generally for helping kids not have diseases it's a tough thing to say no to it's kind of like you know uh when you get that little shakedown at the grocery store and they're like hey do you want to donate five dollars or do you hate orphans and then you have to be like i <laughs> i three dollars like orphans Right. And then just hope the people behind you in line don't see you. Also, by the way, yes, I think we talked about this in the past. Those things are not always on the up and up. But what, what you said, Matt, there about how eventually it doesn't matter or it may not matter, epigenetics aside, you're still, you're still a valuable piece of the puzzle. But it's a lot like for anybody who's been in the suburbs, I've seen people in the suburbs who, who've done things I thought were so clever. There was, um, one family I, I, I was aware of that had decided they didn't have to build a fence because if their backyard neighbor built a fence and the house to the right built a fence and the house to the left built a fence. Oh, they found me. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> We'll keep that in. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like eventually the fence functionally gets built with no action on your own part. And this DNA stuff is a little bit, a little bit similar to that, I would say. Um, but again, it's not, it's not necessarily bad. And perhaps the most important point, Jen, before we move on here is that you have ostensibly, um, you have the ability to request that your information be deleted. So read the, read what you're agreeing to very carefully 
uh, because once once that stuff is sold, it's out of the company's hands. Like once Ancestry or MyHeritage or whomever sells your data to that third party, which again could be anyone that is not you or that company, it becomes pretty difficult to track. You will have, even if people are doing their due diligence and trying to help you find it, it, it can be difficult. Um, and also, you know, if you have been in the military or if you, uh, depending on the part of the world you're in, if you have been in, um, in the justice system, the incarceration system, which I guess are two very different systems, uh, then you are, you're, you're probably on file somewhere with some database. But uh, if you want to learn how to delete this information, there's a great article by Business Insider by Aaron Brodwin over at Business Insider, B R O W B R O D W I N, and uh, this will walk you through what you need to do. Otherwise, um, and it varies by company, but otherwise, like a company like Twenty Three and Me would be able to keep your your spit sample and therefore your data for up to 10 years. And given the pace of this technology, genetic research 10 years from now is going to be a, a wildly different animal in comparison to genetic research in 2021. Yeah. So again, choice is up to you. It's your comfort level. You probably will learn some amazing <laughs> things about yourself because it evolves. But um, you know, these people aren't super villains. It's just no one can tell the future yet depending on what minerva gets up to no but i just wanted to say i found another headline from aaron over at business insider and it, mm -hmm. i think it was right before this it was written a couple months before the the, the article we were looking at mm -hmm. it, and the title is dna testing company 23 and me has signed a 300 million dollar deal with a drug giant here's how to delete your data if that freaks you out <laughs> yikes <laughs>